Okay, now I'm done with it. <laughs> and it's working. Hooray. Is that looking? mine or yours? Oh, that's yours. This was mine. Oh, good. Yes. Well, all right. Provisions are here. It is not lost. It is not lost. All is not lost. Indeed. Uh, hello and welcome to Please Would You Shut Up? Uh, I am your host, Michaela Gorman. <laughs> I am your co-host, Blake Hunsley. Uh, and uh, uh, this is a shorter episode because uh, uh, an, a topic uh, appeared today that uh, just had to be talked about. Because Can I just point out that that's wishful thinking? Yes, all right. Uh, hopefully on your part, <laughs> not the listeners, but yeah. Wishful thinking. Wishful thinking. Shortest episode ever. Yeah. yeah. 90 minutes. We're going to attempt to keep it under 20 minutes, but we're already approaching one minute with just saying, Hello. I also went, ah, uh, for a while. Ah! Uh, Don't discount my contributions. <laughs> Not time-wise, anyway. <laughs> Effort is made. <laughs> anyway, so uh, uh, recently, uh, of, of course, a, a film uh, was produced, a, a documentary that is a discussion on the impact of uh, a poo, uh, the Hasapina Penalon, as a representation um, of culture in The Simpsons as to how they they deal with things um the the documentary is called um oh my god uh how, how, how is it the I, problem with a poo yeah the problem that? with a poo and it is uh, is the work of hari uh kandabulu uh balalu uh, i swear <laughs> i'm <laughs> you're fucking at, that up if you're reaching for pronunciation i am not your guy i have i anyway anyway uh uh, uh it is it is this really brilliant uh, uh little documentary discussing the the unique position that the simpsons are in because of uh you know their their, their longevity as a cartoon and like cultural uh, mirror slash inversion cultural mirror i think is a good way to put it but i don't think it's not, not they've anymore. been super funhouse yeah not style anymore. for like the last what 15 years oh god yeah. like they yeah uh ooh, well what no, season is this longer what season uh, is this? Uh, so this is season 30, 31, maybe no. 32. It's 2018, and they started <laughs> oh, in no. 1987? God. 86? That's, okay. This is, okay, so yeah, at longer than 15 years. They're going on 20 years, 20 what? God, 20 some years. They're going on almost 30. They have of irrelevance, of 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 irrelevance. Uh, uh, no, you're right. No, I, I'm Almost talking... twenty years of irrelevance. Yeah. Um. Because yeah. Uh. Season seven. Well, I, I shouldn't say cutoff. that when we're dedicating a segment to talking about it. But I, I, well, admittedly, we relative. are dedicating a segment to, to, uh, criticisms of the show. <laughs> That's the thing. It's relative irrelevance. They are themselves irrelevant, but the impact that they had is very relevant. Um. Uh, it's it's generally believed that uh, the Simpsons stopped being good. I believe it is season seven with the episode in which uh, Seymour Skinner is revealed to be Armin Tanzarian, a layout <laughs> from Capital City. Yeah, and everyone chooses to forget it. Yeah, or yeah. just be okay with it. He just no no steals that was it. worth it. That was worth it for one Bart callback. Like I can't remember how much later it was, but he called him Mr. Tam Principal Tanzarian. Just to shut him up once, and it was yeah, just yeah, this he's great moment right, where it's Armin. like, oh, everybody, everybody knows, everybody remembers that yeah. actually did happen. That's fun. I would argue that it was it, you know, it certainly had hilarious moments later than that. Like, it, yeah, it's, not, it's, it's, it's not it's as, not that it immediately shut off. No, it's that that it began the to peter out. Point. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, from there it kind of because they're on season twenty nine. Yeah, apparently, oh my god. Uh, but yeah, like from there you end up with the problem of every episode overtly and knowingly being like, we can do whatever we want in it, and we're just going to wipe continuity at the end of the episode. Well, you have to. Well, like it's the, 29 years thing. Yeah, but the very How first... How much are you going to do? The very first episode of The Simpsons introduces uh, uh, Santa's Little Helper, and that stayed. Um Maud Flanders died, and that stayed. Yeah, it's a bit cherry picky. Yeah, you know, I think it would be really fun if The Simpsons had started with a basic family setting, pre character base, and premise at the start of each season, and just if you were gonna aim to be on the air for thirty seasons, yeah, which I'm sure wasn't the goal back then. But no, you know what? No. It would have been uh, it. You know, if you if you're gonna stick around, maybe you should have planned that. Well, at, at but, some uh, point, no. They... But it would have been nice if they'd done every season. Just okay. We know we're keeping them the same age. Yeah. That only gets 
you know, that's only enjoyable so long because otherwise there's going to be character weight and developments and things. So instead, no, fuck all of that. And just make it very clear at the end of season one that you will be wiping, doing a complete reset for season two and starting at the same point but going in a completely different direction. That'd be really and cool. And just every season is just a self-contained series of The Simpsons and the people of Springfield where it just you know it's just butterfly effect from moment one and it just goes off somewhere else not only that but because it began in the late 80s if you just keep sticking it there it can become more and more relevant as a perspective the yeah. more you learn about the yeah. 80s because you, you can take it in an obvious direction you can take it in a direction you wouldn't know about until 15 years later when mm -hmm. something comes out and it's like we can tie that into the next season I would love to see you would miss you would miss Pie Man think if you did that oh no you, you can't escape homer with the internet that's important uh th yeah that's yeah, the one flaw in this so. plan that, that, is, that is a super <laughs> 90s necessary look at the internet in which it doesn't do anything but everyone agrees it is fantastic i love this the fantastic 90s but also brings apart there brings upon the downfall of yes <laughs> our main he, he ends up he ends up on the island from uh um, <coughs> oh god I, I can't believe I've completely forgot uh, the prisoner, um, the fantastic uh, uh, '60s uh, oh, English. Incredible. I love the prisoner. I have DVD copies of the entire prisoner series, produced by Annie when they used to actually do shit like that. I fucking love the island. It's one of those things. The prisoner. I, I don't. Great. I've seen a single episode. Of it. Uh, you have in but you you don't know you have no this is what i'm saying is so because much. it's yeah. referenced so much it's like it took me a really long time to see um soylent green mm. and i obviously loved it when i did but at it's the same time bizarre. so much of it i was just excited to see <laughs> in its more original format because i'd seen every yeah. pivotal moment of soylent green <sighs> Uh, done in the simpsons yeah. among, among other little cultural institutions and it's it's great when you have a moment like uh, that i took i took uh, some time about uh a month and a half ago and i sat down and watched the original westworld and that is a film that you just like oh my god you're what so 70s from? okay that that all right so yeah that's like 1977 78 all right no it's 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 after star wars but the, just the first star wars okay and just barely because all right uh michael crichton directed it okay he, he he wrote it and directed it um the villain is uh um yule brenner uh playing, I'm watching it. Yeah, sorry playing a robot hey, cowboy like that, who doesn't say man. any no it's yule brenner i mean it's yule fucking brenner i am there you know and then it's uh james brolin and some other guy that I can't even remember as like two park attendants and they're just they spend half the movie being like this is re goddamn ridiculous just like literally every line might as well this is re goddamn ridiculous I need to watch this and then Yul Brenner comes and tries to kill them and it turns into yes just being stalked by Yul Brenner across like Disney World I hate to time check you ah. but we're eight minutes in and we've Almost referenced oh, the God. core message of this. Damn, it happens episode. every fucking time. Okay, so, <laughs> anyway, documentary, Problem with a Poo. Uh, fantastic in the sense that it... Uh, it Who's it by? Um, I'm not going to try that again. <laughs> Fuck you. Uh, uh, but it, it, it discusses, like, uh, the way that a poo started as possibly one of the only consistent forms of representation on American uh, television of an Indian American even though that representation was itself a simplistic stereotype. Now, that, that simplistic stereotype did grow uh, uh, into a beloved, rich character, um, not even necessarily by the time he got his family. I, uh, the episode, uh, Who Needs a Quickie Mart? If, if, if that didn't enshrine uh, Apu, the person within you, you know, your heart, as, as like a, a full fleshed out character, then you weren't watching and paying attention to Simpsons, at, you know, in their in their prime. Who needs the quickie mart? Who needs that quickie mart? I do. Uh, so, God, I love that, that felt fucking necessary. episode. That's another it is thing a great that, episode. that Simpsons uh, don't do well anymore. Musical episodes. They used to do great. I honestly musical wouldn't know, and that. Uh, now, I haven't seen uh, an episode in, like, three seasons. Oh, no. Oh, God. Wow. Like, 
not 15, not saying a bit much. I would say 10 at least. And that's not like, well, I don't know if it is consciously tuning out or just, I get, you can only watch so much of something. Like, and it, it's and I understand it's they're the trying to get viewers quality. from a new era. They're trying to get the viewers who, you know, like back when it came on yeah. in the 80s, like I was their core demo apparently at that point. <laughs> Buying the toys and the commercials anyway. Um, well, that's the thing. It took such a sharp turn after the first year because yeah. the first year it was supposed to be like it's adult and college humor. Yeah, I honestly I don't remember the first year. I've For seen fans I know of the Tracy like, Allman yeah, show. Yeah, I know, I know. I know. <laughs> it's like what the can fuck? we take a brief oh, brief yes. aside to Tracy Allman? Yeah. Oh my god, what is her new show called? Is it always the Tracy? Is it the it's Tracy all, Allman it, show? Yeah, it's or either a Tracy either, Allman show. That would be great if she finally just said like start playing with it that way. Like Tracy a Allman's Tracy show? Allman show. It's seriously Tracy Allman's, it's in Tracy there, Allman show. Tracy Allman's Tracy Allman show starring Tracy Allman. Yeah, as oh Tracy my god, Allman. as Tracy Allman. <sighs> Have you? Are, how familiar are you with with her current show? Uh, not with her current show, not. Oh my god, <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. Her Angela Merkel. You want to see good musical numbers. Angela Merkel pulling a musical number. It's so, so good. Um, Nicola Sturgeon, the SNP uh, head of Scotland. Yeah. And we marry. Marry Black. She's her sidekick. It's, oh, you should, well, we marry Black, you need to look up anyway. We'll get into this. This is... This is a whole other pop culture episode. Yeah, oh well, my lord! Tracy Allman, not is, just Tracy Allman. I'm talking Wee Mary and her Wee maiden Mary. speech to Parliament. Like, oh yeah, yeah. You want to get you want to get people who are fans of nonsense, nonsensical, but actually well meant and epically delivered bombastic nonsense. You want to watch that? Oh, she's she's actually great. Oh, she is. My god. But so we're not critiquing her. Or and we're definitely not critiquing Tracy Allman. We're critiquing The Simpsons right. because so, of the of, yeah. well of the response to this. Yeah. So uh, you know, obviously, the the Simpsons take a while to be produced because they're high quality animation and, and all that. And so you have to write a script. Mm -hmm. You have to get the millionaires to agree to uh, uh, come into the room and read the script. You have to then okay, send the, it to Korea. I don't mind the voice actor millionaires, like the the day to day Simpsons. Yeah. Any show that starts pumping out the guest stars every episode uh, is going to get immediately yeah. tiresome. I don't understand how that object lesson gets missed every time. Like, I, I kind of like the... There, uh, there, there are would, some fun ones. I know it's basically an honor at this point, but like most of be done no. correctly. One person that I think always appears well is John Hamm. Um, and it's not just because he has this amazing presence and uh, uh, comic timing and is, of course, gorgeous, but... It's almost like this weird, like immediately because he he only he he became famous for being this very serious character, mm -hmm. but he's this great comedic presence. He's hysterical. So it, it any time he appears in a cameo, I love it. Okay. Because it's just this thing of like, and I'm John Hamm. It's like, of course you are. <coughs> no, no, I'm not saying there's been no like. There's been, oh my God, who did um, Homer's mom? Wasn't that uh, oh, Glenn that, Close? Yes. Yeah, and, but there's like, a there's the difference between old and ones. new appearance. It used to be that they would create a character, and then they would take that person whose voice is known, and you know, and and, and insert them. They never had Michael Jackson on the show. They had a white guy named Michael Jackson, who was voiced by Michael Jackson. That was great. That was amazing. Uncredited, no less, I believe. Unaccredited, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, you know, Glenn Close. She wasn't playing Glenn Coase, and Glenn Coase suddenly comes to Springfield, oh, no, 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 no. wandering I'm around. Talking, going, even when you have a guest star every other week playing a character, I'm just when when you get that moment where if you had a studio audience, they're supposed to go, "Woo, it's that person!" Oh, yeah. No, no, I don't want to be excited by the voice actor. I want my regular stable of voice actors. I want a lot of gifted extras, you know. Beloved character actress Margot Martindale types who you know <laughs> they're all about the service. They're not about the fans. They're not about the fans. They're not about the glory. They're no, about it, it, they're about doing the job right. Doing the do it right. And then you the have character. like two episodes a season where you have an incredible guest star. Yeah. But no, otherwise you're last time out Will and Gracing it. Like, yeah. And this week on Will and Grace, every fucking one 
Like, ah, oh, no, hey, Jenny from hello, the block. No, Elon not. Musk. Madonna? God. You just moved in next door. You say? Oh my god, that is so amazing. We'll never You're see charming you again. and sexually ambiguous. Who will you make out with? Everyone. My money's on everyone. By the way, the 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 the, the welcome back, Will and Grace is very funny in just the way I wanted it to be. Okay. Yeah, it's a... I, I have a good time watching I, it. I never watched Will and Grace uh, uh, growing up. Um, I was it's a Dharma and Greg for some fucking poo. reason. It's the same thing as a poo. Yeah. Early on, it was like... We're not going to discount Ellen. We're not allowed. But early on, it was one of the uh, only representations on yeah. TV. So it doesn't matter and how it bad was it is. So Right, because Will never kissed anyone. This is all you have. Yeah, just... Jack was just consistently over the top in a way that more of a personal thing at that age i wasn't sure i got as opposed yeah. to older comfortable gay me that it's like ha camp is wonderful well actually that that's what i was going to tie but this jack whole... is older and more into it too now yeah but also like all of the characters have kind of been allowed to be more i don't want to say realistic but uh yeah, they're, more they're recognizable perhaps kid. like yeah. you know the gay men are allowed to actually pursue not just, like, wholesome, super, like, you're the one relationships, but, like, no, no, occasionally you're allowed to bungle it and just get lucky and have a little fun at the doorstep. Like, ah. no, and I, I enjoy that. I think that's great. Yeah. yeah. And, and, but they, I, uh, when, but, when but I they haven't, this... but I'm guessing, okay, so the critique of this documentary is that yes. they haven't. Yes, so for, well, they first tied back to this. Yeah, exactly. And we were yeah. tangenting pretty hard. We, we, we made were, it back. We, we were, made it back. We, we are going to end up back there, but we will first, yes. So, yeah. Uh, uh, it's a circuitous route, but you will get there together. Yeah. So keep in mind that the documentary is one of those things that is made. It's like it's made with love. It's like we wouldn't put this much effort into it and we wouldn't care about this if we didn't actually care and enjoy your work. We just don't want you to see you slip. Mm -hmm. And The Simpsons released a, uh, a video, one of their, their bumper videos that they do now, mostly about Trump, which are just like, yeah, I get it. You, you hate Trump, too. You're Can you're we also well off. Contrast so. them with South Park that hates Trump so much that they basically couldn't even say his name. They turned to Oh no no Trump. no no! It's not that, that they was, hate no. him. No, they they they've said this in interviews. It's not that they hate him. They don't understand what to do with him comedically. Oh yeah. Oh, that's it, so much he worse. He broke them. Oh, he that's broke so much worse. South Park. But that's what the response from South Park should be, because South Park has always skewered everything skewerable. But then you have something that is just. It's not skewerable because it's just too bad. Well, the season when the election was happening, you can tell that they fully believed, like everyone else, that Hillary's going to get, get oh, yeah. in because that's where the fucking storyline was leading to. Oh, yeah. And suddenly they had to eject the entire thing and they lost all focus for, for two seasons. They lost all focus. I kind of loved it. I, I kind yes of and loved no, it. because it's like, they don't know what the fuck they're doing for once. Not in the sense like these are these are egos. Yes, winners, but it's like, okay, and but they we're don't talking know what to about do how, with it. We're talking. We were talking earlier about how the Simpsons are a reflection of like a mirror on society. It's become a funhouse yeah. mirror because it's just base boring, comedic, and it doesn't really reflect society anymore. Yeah. But South Park has always been a very sharp social mirror. Rather sharp. Rather. Yeah. Uh, well, no, no, no. Right, right. Okay. No, 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 no. I, I, I'm saying that as a fan, as someone who has played all their video games, all seen right. every episode, all right, every no nuance, seen everything that Matt and Trey have ever produced, including Orgasmo and Cannibal the Musical. I have not seen Cannibal the Musical. Oh no, that's Orgasmo the classic. Is great. Okay, it, it's I better than Orgasmo. But anyway, my whole point is, what better reflection of society was there, post? that election that's a good point then losing a bunch of focus and ejecting a lot of storyline that that's a really that's a really good point actually um it was kind of comforting to know i wasn't alone in my it. yeah exactly it's just like but i'm flabbergasted it's like yeah but so so is everyone in south park colorado like oh okay well, that makes me feel a little better that's why i think they uh they kind of turned to uh, doing video guys. games because they're just like ah oh, fuck it we'll, we'll make a video game about about superheroes and we'll make a video game about D D because I, I, i'm retreating to things that are comfortable ready player one ready player one we'll get to that in a different Oh, I was going to take us back by addressing that they have a character named Token who is less of a token than yeah. the character that had a documentary made about That's an excellent. Game. That's a that's a really good point. But yes, we'll get okay. 
to the and a bridge points. back to our original narrative and segue yeah um so uh, uh the document the documentary finally got a response from the simpsons and the simpsons more or less went well you know if you don't like it maybe stop watching I want to take a pause to watch this because yeah, we've talked actually, about this. We, put, I haven't put seen this it. Out. We're, we're allowed to have it in the background uh, as sound because this is a critical discussion. Okay. So you can just play the damn thing. Well, I could, but my computer is very slow, so that's why I'm suggesting a pause. Oh, okay. <laughs> we'll be right back. This would actually be a really good time to mention that people can donate to us on Patreon. Yeah, find us on Patreon at uh, Here Ego. Uh, also, we are available on Twitter at won't you shut up and at industry is doom uh in the notes section of your donation please indicate whether it's to hey tranny or hey fag <laughs> and then we'll know which one of us you love more thanks If at if at all. all, if at all, that is the oh, response that, is that, so that, that the Simpsons, spoken by Lisa Simpson, the character who intentionally exists did to she be say progressive. That did Marge? No, that it, Marge says it first. No, no, Marge says these are things that will be dealt with in the future, and Lisa responds, looking dead down the camera. If at all, Lisa at a the, later date, the, the character who exists to be progressive and to make change. The character who, when presented with Malibu Stacy being offensive, created her own version and was applauded for it by the creator of Malibu Stacy. They have shit all over their own characters and basis. They have become Skinner, blaming the children for being wrong. Uh, see, I wasn't expecting to be super annoyed by the response. I was really interested about the documentary, and now having seen the trailer, I'm extra interested about it. Um, some really strong statements from people in there hating mm -hmm. Apu. Like, there are some very prominent... Starting with Cal Penn, just yeah. straight up, I hate just, Apu. I like, hate Apu. Yeah. Just, but then it's okay, funny, because I haven't thought about Hank Azaria voicing Apu in a long time. And it's funny, when you do see him do it live, it's like, mm, it seems a little weird in this day and age. Yeah. But, then, but I get that Apu's been successful for so long among you know for most people apparently yeah. but but when i think about it like we talked about earlier with will and grace like cliche characters well that, you're happy for a cliche character originally yeah but when there's you know when there's competition and there's lots of in this case indian characters not lots but you know there's there's well there's there's more indian comparatively characters. there's normal indian characters on tv there are yep. exciting indian characters on tv yep. you can see whatever you want yeah it was interesting to see Sakina Joffrey <laughs> lampooning yeah. the cliche Indian uh, accent voice, considering I know I've seen her do it. I believe yeah. on the Mindy Project, isn't it? I believe yeah. so. Yeah. 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 Yes. And that may have, like, uh, the but way then, that's set up, I think it's them discussing times when they've gone into uh, yeah. a job and the, the producers are like, so uh, how Indian can you be? And they're like, I am Indian? Yeah. And they go, no, 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 but can you do that voice? Yeah. yeah. See, and I kind of appreciate that she's telling that story, having seen her in a role where she used that voice, because it's like, I kind of value that, I value your opinion more because you took that job, and now you're still willing to say, yeah, you're still it, willing to make a point. still offensive, like, though, yeah. Yeah. No, I'm, ex I'm excited to see this, and it did, it did make me question a poo, and I knew I would a little bit, because a poo is... Yeah. But he's, in my head, he's an inoffensive stereotype, but, you know, I get that I'm coming from a place of not being an Indian, so so I understand that. But there are a lot of, I guess, the most cliched gay characters that I under, that I enjoy, if I can make it more relatable to myself and still, you know, make it kind of applicable here, like Buddy Cole yeah. is hilariously cliche, well, right? that, that, that's... but at the same time, he's... Only he only exists in that period of time. He doesn't. He hasn't been going on for thirty years. Yeah, and, and I that's can't actually, imagine how I feel about that now. That's totally something that I want to tie it back to because this is um, to to kind of uh, uh, give it a a uh, an equivalency. This is uh, like camp. 
This is like someone walking out and going, hello, Daffy. This camp's is, hilarious. Yeah, camp is hilarious, but it also is like, camp is hilarious when it comes from people who are within it. If yes. you get someone out, and, and uh, to make a really, really direct <gasps> point, remember Hank Azaria? Oh, no, that's, well, I didn't, I, I was spacing entirely. If a straight man was playing yeah. Buddy Cole for 30 years, I'd be having a And, and th oh. there's the thing, remember Hank Azaria in uh -oh. the birdcage? Uh... Yeah, that didn't bother me at all, actually. No, so maybe because him... Hank Azaria is ah. fantastic. He is but... great. But again, if he was still doing that role now, exactly. I would I would have a serious problem with it. Yeah, yeah. There there are aspects, and I think that if he came back and did it now, I'd laugh my head off. But it's yeah. the consistency. It's that we're supposed to be watching narrative growth. Yeah. Plus that that really worked in because a, a uh, Robin Williams was very serious in his characterization. What the and, fuck was that character's name? And B, Nathan Lane was his husband. Oh man! So I love Nathan. You're, Lane. You you you've got Nathan just kind of like cementing everything. So you can have Hank Azaria be offensive because then you turn to Nathan Lane, and you're like, ha, ah, right, oh. never mind. Oh, Nathan Lane. <laughs> I think Nathan Lane was probably Nathan Lane's character in the Birdcage was probably at that point the first super feminine gay man yeah that i ever that i first yeah like was able to super enjoy and just kind of respect <laughs> despite all the crazy like just yeah. nope nope i still kind of get and enjoy the and fuck I, out of you and, and like that character has a bag of cats for a brain yeah absolutely yeah. which and you know coming as like at that age like young gay boy from the sticks like i was all into my like no gotta pretend to be in any way a macho because <laughs> otherwise like people yell fag from their cars because it's the early 2000s kind of thing you know and but just so fucking well done so yeah. funny so it, it it does have like this this odd and that wouldn't bother me if nathan lane played that character for 30 years no that no. wouldn't bother me at all no because nathan lane is gay Nathan Lane is gay, and it's also in its in its one cinematic stretch in a way more nuanced ah, than a poo. Here's here's a question that uh, might be tying, unfair, but no, no. But here's it a doesn't question feel it. tying it back to Nathan Lane. Would you want to see him uh, uh, be um, uh, uh, the character from the producers for thirty years, in which he plays a straight Jewish man? No, but it doesn't have anything to do with that. It's just, I wouldn't... In, it's it's enjoyable as a movie, but I well, wouldn't even tune in for the, a season. The original Producers is enjoyable as a movie. The, the, the movie version of the musical wasn't very good. Is it Matthew Broderick? Does he bother you? No, no, it's a staging. It, they stage it Are as... Are you sure it's not Matthew Broderick and how he bothers you? It's, it's not Matthew Broderick. It's how they shoot it as if it is just point the camera at the fucking stage and that's it. A lot of people tell me that Matthew Broderick bothers them, and it's, and it's that. Matthew Broderick doesn't bother me because I everything that Matthew Broderick is cast in, he is cast as a loser, and I, I, it's just like no, that makes sense. He's a loser. Oh, he's a loser. He, uh, he he's falling backwards into everything, and everything sucks. Burnt. He, he married a horse. Burnt to burnt to cinders. <laughs> Heavens. What a tangent. Let's get back to the, yes. let's get back to the point before we brutalize their children. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, um, uh, uh, the the Simpsons uh, kind of responded in a way that not many people were expecting from a show that tries to portray itself as being rather you know progressive and foresighty. It didn't come that. across as rebellious in any way. It didn't come across as like we're sticking to principles in any way. It just yeah. came across as in like we didn't really have the time to care about this. And we, we aren't going to put the time into it now. Maybe we will someday. Probably not. And that it's that probably not of like if at all. If at all. If at all, are, are you going to be canceled and you're just being like Listen, here's the thing. It's actually becoming way too expensive to produce this. We're not getting the returns. And we're, we've scripted out to the end of the show. And we're Who cares if that's what it is? Nobody watching that little segment knew that. It no, just comes nobody across, watches it. So it just comes across as just absolutely, completely disinterested. Here's the other thing, though. There's, there's a, a minority opinion on it. And the minority opinion is that uh, they are intentionally doing it because 
are you speaking or talking about The Simpsons otherwise? What do they think people are going to tune into Hate Watch? Yeah, is to that hate what they want to become? Or see what, or even to just uh, apply to people who who if they're not overtly right or something that they're just like I'm so sick of hearing all these people complain. Oh no, I I no, I I refuse to. I would hope to that not. Theory. No, I would certainly. That's hope a minority that. report for a reason, I think. But in in the in the realm of fourth dimensional chess, in the land of Trump, nothing is certain and everything is shit. What? Whose law is it where you should never su- uh, ascribe to malice what can be ascribed to what uh, is it? That incompetence. W- uh, I believe it's given to Churchill, but I don't think he actually. No, said that doesn't. It. No. Uh, he did say starve those brown people, though, which... Uh, no, no, he also said gas the Kurds. Yeah, so he probably he probably would have more problems with this documentary. Yeah. <laughs> that seems like a good point to that's call a, the that's show. That's a great play. Fuck you, Winston Churchill. Thank you for listening. <laughs> I feel like this episode may have dragged on, not in a way that I, dis- that I didn't enjoy, but because I accidentally mentioned beloved character actress Margot Martindale like midway through yeah <laughs> i didn't even realize it but subconsciously i probably thought the credits were rolling right after that's that's what it should have ended because that's right what there. they do margo martindale to you all beloved beloved character actress margo martindale